How you feel about um, these different companies now out here, sports teams starting to now acknowledge, you know, their racism and different things like that. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Do you feel that like that's progress or you feel like they're just doing that to accommodate, to kind of keep the beast from waking up fully? I think there's nothing they can do about it right now. Because one thing that everybody has learned out of this whole situation, some people were paid off to make us come down, to give us a new show, to make believe that with this relationship, things were going to change, but ch things didn't change. So why the NFL is doing what they're doing right now, they're going with the flow. <clears throat> they're going with the flow. Don't mean that they still care. But one thing you pay attention to, now that they're going with the flow, a lot of owners going out of the business. So what that did, mm. some going to be real and some going to stay. But the whole game is set up like that. See, if you play a game to live, when the game over, you ain't in control. They say when the game over. So you just got to realize now that they never wanted sports to ever be politicized. That's the thing. They've been fighting since the Olympics back in the day when the yes. Olympics. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They've been doing that. They never wanted politics and sports to intermingle. But it's kind of funny that uh, Cap's standing with Dr. Dre now. Mm -hmm. So that means the first people that they were standing with, he don't trust no more. Damn, deep, deep. Cell therapy. Y'all, y'all did that so long ago as young brothers. For that to prophesize 20 some odd years later, what was going through y'all head at the time when y'all created that? It was funny how, the, how it came about. Organized Noise was in the studio, Dark Studios, and they were working with TLC. Mm -hmm. uh, Buster Rhymes and Rampage was in Studio B. They were working on Rampage out. Well, Big Rube was out in the front. You know, him and Buster started kicking it. Buster was like, yo, man, I want, I want you to have this book. He knew Rube was on that kind of thinking. Rube read this book, brought it back to the dungeon. Said, hey, man, everybody got to read this book. It was Behold of the Pale Horse. <clears throat> From that book, we all read it. And when we got to the studio in Boston that day, I remember Reek playing this beat. And he said, man, we took that book out. And we said, what we learned out that book, say it in a verse. And for everything that we said in that song, for it to come true 25 years, 26 years later, it's amazing because I don't know no other group that created a song that came to life outside of what's everyday culture. Right. It's amazing to be a part of something like that, but at the same time, too, it lets us know we ain't crazy, King. So, so now, now you got a doctor out here talking about alien blood. <clears throat> now you got the government out here talking about, oh yeah, it's, it's it's UFO. Yeah. Now you got the government talking about now we got a space for it. What we need space police for if ain't no real alien? Mm. See what's going, what's about to happen is the one the one percent playing the game. This is how they're gonna get society. They also said the scientists are working on a, a vaccine that'll make people unreligious. That's falling into everything that's been said in that book, ain't it? You got to take religion away to take the to take the world into the new world order. You got to take religion away. Religion can't matter no more. Everybody the same religion. Only thing that can turn everybody into the same religion is show them something they ain't never seen before. He, he talk about people like um, you talk about that book, Behold the Pale Horse, and I forget the author's name of it. It just slipped my mind for a minute. But um, you talk about people like Tupac and people who were uh, prophets, poets at the time, um, and that William Cooper's his name. He was actually yeah. killed as well. 
but I want to kind of transition to Tupac a little bit. Um, is it a coincidence that when people like expose information like this or that our revolutionaries are sometimes or all the time, it seems like killed and seem like or made it seem like something else pretty much happened to him. Malcolm X, mm-hmm. uh, Martin Luther King, all the way down the line. What's your thoughts on that? When he just showed y'all who the real revolutionaries and who are not. Mm. The ones that got all the money, man, they tools, man. They set up. They made they made for everybody to believe they the best. That's how it go, man. They always pick one. And they give him all the power. They give him to say he the best. He ain't nothing better than him. Oh my God, it always worked. It's been this, that, and the other. That's always been like that, ain't it? Yeah. The real ones don't get the money. The Panthers didn't get the money. Once Martin started talking that real shit, what happened? Mm-hmm. Once Malcolm started talking the real shit, what happened? But it's like another thing is that how you start is how you leave it. How you start is how you end the game. I'm just proving to you that I'm me. I'm the same dude that did that song 25 years ago. The industry ain't changed me. Industry, industry ain't broke me. Gil been here the whole time. Man, when Goody Ma went down, we went. I went and put out a, a solo album, sold 100,000 right before Independent was cool. So me coming off a major, coming off Outkast records, it was always platinum records, huh? You got two Goody Ma albums, that's platinum. Uh, 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 the, the third album, that went platinum. All the Outkast albums went platinum. Mm-hmm. And they sold more platinum every time. So for me, to, when I went out and did a solo record, Hey man, a hundred thousand, that wasn't nothing, but it was great to me. And boom, we put out a good and Marvel, low when it did, Nas Barkley. It ain't been no group of dudes that did what we did. Low went over to the other side of the world and changed the world and came back mm-hmm. as a whole nother artist. Then Gippy went over there and got with Nelly them, sold seven million on sweatsuit, sold five hundred a gold record on, on the dirty NT uh Album, then did me and Ali did 350, then we did nine million on grills. Mm-hmm. But then people don't they act like they don't see us. See, the difference between us and everybody else, see, our music ain't built on samples and other people's music and other people's interpretations. All our music is original. Okay. That's why they shun this this group over here, this group of fellas over here, that's why they shun it because they know it's real talent and it ain't never been able to be controlled. None of us have been able to be controlled. So at the end of the day, man, there ain't no trip. God saved us. For, they say the best for the rest. Everybody else, in, and they out the game, ain't they? Everybody else, they like, shit, folk the best. Uh, we don't even rap no more. We doing a podcast. We ain't putting out no. They quit. <laughs> yeah. To talk, talk about. Um, we, we right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> right before the pandemic, we was on we was on the Dungeon Family tour. And we sold out almost every night, man. <clears throat> like we still at any time, and everybody know, man. We the greatest show on earth, man. Ain't nobody can come outcast a good tomorrow, man. We who who you gonna put us against on the stage? <clears throat> It wouldn't be no contest. You put us on versus, it wouldn't be no contest because you couldn't go from CeeLo Green to 3000 to get with Nelly them. You couldn't do that. What mm-hmm. other crew could do it? Our 20 records would be foolish. <laughs> mm-hmm. And guess what? All of them, all of them, if they organize, know it. Original. Yeah. Original. Original, King. That's the biggest thing that we got. That's the biggest difference between artists from Atlanta, New York, LA. You got to understand, I grew up in a city where it was nothing but black people. I ain't never seen no other culture around me. I ain't never went to school with white people, bro. Mm -hmm. You understand that? I ain't. So me going to another city and looking at other folks like, ooh, you got to respect them people. Ooh, you got to respect them people. I was like, man, I don't even understand that kind of language, huh? I'm from the city of the freedom fighters. Right. I don't even understand that. 
So understand, amazing how I think about how that was back then, walking up into them rooms and the people expecting you to have that bow head kind of, ooh, hey, yeah, oh yeah. No, you never got that from us. We were like, shit, man. Man, I know Andy Young, man. Ain't shit you doing to me, man. I, that's how we been for 20 years, man. We ain't never bowed our head. That's why they don't got them hold us up. Hmm. But that's okay, though. Because at the end of the day, when we can throw a concert downtown Atlanta and and and, and what put, bring a hundred thousand out there from all over the world, we know what we did. We don't need we, we don't need we don't need them fake ass trophies and that fake ass. We don't need that. Dungeon family ain't gonna never need that. Cause we we ain't our shit ain't built on nobody else shit. And you got to look at the Dungeon family. We are the first line of the South when we say hip-hop. So when you get us, you get the best of it. Excellence. Since day one, excellence. Never be. Only people that can compete with Rockefeller. The every time they drop, we drop. Platinum. Every time they drop, we drop. Platinum, huh? What? Huh? See you? That's what I'm saying. But if the books ain't wrote like that. See right. you? The books ain't wrote like that. The books wrote like it's only two people doing something. <laughs> huh? Mm. If 3,000 love, the, if three, I think if 3,000 love the public, like other rappers that, that's at a certain level love the public, he could be that. But guess what? Shawty ain't never gave a fuck about that shit. He ain't never walked around with no bodyguards, even on Love Below. He never had a bodyguard. Mm. This will let you know what type of people we is, bro. Like, we ain't, we real artists. We did our first album, Goody Mob, in Curtis Mayfield House. Wow. Yeah, yeah, CeeLo told us that. Man, we didn't even know. We grew up, Curtis Mayfield stayed on the other side of Camelton Road because he was partners with Hank Aaron. Mm. So he had a house that was around the corner from Hank and Aaron house because they were partners. So just imagine, Reek them said, yo, we ain't going to do the album down in Boss Town, shit. We did, we did Outcast down in Boss Town. We're going to do y'all album at Curtis Mayfield House. Man, we, we, walked, we walked in there where he recorded all the Superfly and all this shit, bro. Like, he used to have, I would, he brought me, he said, one time we was in there recording, he came and he said, kill. He said, come here, let me show you something. He took me in his bedroom and he showed me all the original tapes of Superfly the movie. Hey. He went in his closet and he gave me a sweatsuit. I wore that sweatsuit on Soul Food, my nigga. <laughs> That's what's real for me, man. Hey. That's 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 how Gip came up. I came up seeing Larry Blackman ride around our neighborhood in a Ferrari at a time where, like, wow. See, Atlanta was different. Atlanta's always been. I've seen Andy Young, all the, uh uh shit, all the Freedom Fighters kids I grew up with. All of them, they were my friends. So I've seen a fluent black. Lawyers, judges, man, the, the chief of police. Since I was a child, I ain't never seen nothing else. Mm. I used to see Abdullah the Butcher in our neighborhood, Tony Atlas. Mm. We used to see uh, uh, Abdullah the Butcher, Ric Flair used to come over in the limousine in the hood and see, uh, and see Abdullah the Butcher. Man, we ain't seen nothing but black excellence all our life. So the attitude that we had and the attitude we always kept, we ain't never known nothing else. So the music business, it's like, man, I've been riding in business and business and all that since I was a child, you know? Mm. That, 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 everybody had, Rico Wade used to drive, Rico Wade had his own car in sixth grade. Rico used to drive to school, you know? Like in real life, it's real. Like Bo Young, Andrew Young's son, Buzzy. That's uh 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 Maynard Jackson's son. Do you understand 
this is why Atlanta is so special, and this is what people don't don't understand about Atlanta. Then when when Maynard Jackson built the airport, he made it where thirty percent of all business that go through that airport had to go to black business. That means forever, man. And our airport is the biggest airport on the East Coast. That shit's huge. Black people, man. So when I when I when I when we talk about OGs from other cities, see, in the West you're gonna talk about probably a gangster. See, in New York, you're gonna probably talk about a drug dealer. See, in New York, we talk about kings. 